Chapter 14 The Magic of Flowers Quote, If you have two loaves of bread, sell one and buy a lily. Unquote. This is an old Chinese proverb, and the Chinese said something there. But the proverb could apply to any flower, even those of the wild variety. They can do so much to bring out the magic in your mind. Here was flowers which outshone the glory of Solomon. You should always have flowers in your home or office, real flowers, and not the artificial ones so popular today, even though they are very realistic. And you should have them in the room where you meditate. Flowers help to raise the mind, increase your vibration, and have great healing properties. Flowers raise the act of meditation to the highest levels, to one of real usefulness in helping you to make headway spiritually and materially. They are positive and they are productive of meritorious thought. At the time of arranging them in your home or retreat, you may reflect that this has been the practice of the Tibetans and the saintly. You may reflect on the flower's perfection, and the more often you do this, the more often will that flower help to rule out greed, hatred and anger that leads to tears, and ignorance which makes this life of yours what it is, a state of anxiety and unhappiness most of the while. A flower is beauty itself. You see that it is a lovely colour, that it emanates sweet scent, and that it is soft to the touch. It influences you to be gentle. Surround yourself with flowers and watch the results. Flowers are vibratory and give off radiations of a positive kind. In the old days, men used to wear flowers in their buttonholes, and if you have seen them, you will have observed that it was always the smiling, happy men who wore them. The happier they were, the bigger the buttonhole. It was as though the flowers had a wonderful effect on them. Today, you only seem to see men with a buttonhole at weddings, or on some specially gay occasion, and much of the laughter has gone. I have known women replace a pearl necklace with real gardenias on the neck, supported by a transparent adhesive tape. It is far more glamorous than the most costly pearls. I have seen real flowers worn as earrings. A blue-eyed beauty with flowers in her hair once caused a traffic block. An artist saw her and he was carried away with her loveliness. She became a famous model. Quote, it was the flowers in her hair that got me, he said. I wish more English girls wore them." Unquote. And I learned that every morning the flowers at her bus stop had fresh flowers ready for her to pin in her hair. She attracted admirers wherever she went because of this romantic touch. And through those flowers she became famous. Through flowers a state of happiness can be achieved beyond the power of most of us to understand. When people you know suddenly ignore you or when they try to pick a quarrel, don't tell them off or send them a nasty letter. Send flowers. Flowers bring harmony and peace. They have a power all of their own, and you can say it with flowers. Do you know the language of flowers? As soon as man was sufficiently civilized to have any appreciation of the aesthetic, he became vividly aware of the beauty of nature's blossoms. There followed a symbolic and mystic attribution to these qualities and meanings. Beautiful and poetic thoughts were conveyed to the presentation of a sprig of blossoms, and whole messages were communicated by bouquets in which each flower chosen betokened a significant idea. Not only love and happiness were the tenor of those floral missives, coquetry, dalliance, indifference and coolness, rebuff, refusal, scorn, contempt, all were expressed by a suitably chosen flower. It is worth remembering that flowers can be telegraphed to many parts of the world. Oceans and con continents present no barriers to the floral message, which can bring out the magic in the mind of the one you send them to. Here are some examples. Forget-me-not speaks for itself. Red rose means I love you. White rose, I love you not. A red Kardashian means passionate love, I must see you soon. A bronze Chrysanthemum means friendship. Though I value your friendship, I cannot love you.
A tiger lily, passion, my love knows no bounds. Mistletoe, I send you a thousand kisses. The ancients used this way of speaking to each other, and for those who are shy, it can be very useful. You will reap endless joy in giving flowers, which have a meaning. It is good psychology, and there is magic in it both for him who gives and the one who receives. When you give thought to flowers, to what they mean and what they can do for you, you are on the right lines for happiness and success. Many famous personalities have made use of flowers to express their feelings. Nero, who was fond of extravagant displays, enhanced the glory of one of his entertainments by covering the whole surface of Lake Lucia with roses. What a wonderful sight it must have been. Cleopatra, for one of her feasts she gave to, Ant to honour Antony, caused the floor of her palace to be covered to a depth of 18 inches with sweet-smelling rose petals. There's romance for you. Stories of the rose are innumerable, so noble that H. L. V. Fletcher, novelist, horticultural writer and rosarian, has distilled the, quote, attire, unquote, of a lifetime's love for all to enjoy and treasure and read again in his magnificent book, The Rose Anthology. It has been said of this remarkable anthology of prose and verse, set in the framework of Fletcher's personal comment, that it offers something for every rose lover. But surely they must mean everyone, for the rose is the flower of all the world. It has been revered throughout the ages and should constantly remind us of a glory which cannot be matched by man. If you would be reminded of this glory then, I would commend the book's pride of place in the room which I have already suggested you should try to set aside for your meditation. You will be bound to gain much from it, and you will be glad, as I am, that Fletcher did not fail to include within its many enchanting pages what is perhaps the finest and most moving story of all, The Rose of Life. You know it? In case not, let me tell you briefly. Surgeons carrying out the most intricate of operations on the heart pin a single red rose of life on the machine that takes over the functions of the heart and lungs while they sew up a tear in the heart itself. The rose remains within sight of the waking patient, to whom it will be presented by the theatre sister. At one famous hospital, no heart operation begins until the rose ritual has been completed. This is magic psychology. Think of what it must mean to the waking patient to encounter such beauty. You should always keep one rose of life in a single vase. Harry Wheatcroft, probably the most celebrated rose grower alive, says, He who would grow good roses must have roses in his heart. And he is a pacifist. Quote, I deplore beyond all measure the thousands of billions spent to create implements to destroy mankind. With all that money, everybody could grow roses. The world could be made so beautiful if only people dot 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 unquote. Yes, if only people had roses in their heart, there would be no more wars, no more misery, just beauty and goodness. People who have never plucked a rose in their lives have heard, have never heard People who have never plucked a rose in their lives have heard of Harry Wheatcroft. The rose was given by Cupid to Harpocrates, the god of silence, as a bribe not to betray the amour of Venus. Hence the rose became the emblem of silence. Mm. It is wise to choose roses for your retreat when you go there for silence and meditation. From this old legend originated the custom of suspending a rose from the ceiling at meetings where matters that demanded secrecy were discussed. And today we find the roses carved on the ceilings of council chambers, and in the 16th century it was placed over, placed over confessionals. What you say to your subconscious, and what your subconscious says to you when you listen during the meditation in your private little room, in silence, stillness and solitude is something to be regarded as a secret. Try always to keep a rose there. It will help you to bring out magic.
Roman emperors wishing to confer a special honor on their generals would grant them the permission to add a rose to the ornaments on their shields, and it, u it is used by His Holiness the Pope when he desire desires to bestow special recognition on a church, sanctuary, or country. You may have a garden full of flowers, but you have been given, but have you given serious thought to them? Roses have long been credited with many healing and curative qualities. There are more than thirty remedies compounded from their leaves and petals, and dew from the flowers has often been used as a cure for inflamed eyes. Roses in the room of a drinker are said to ward off heavy drinking. Drinking. When people become more alive to what flowers can do. The key to our forgotten healing powers will be tuned into the into when people become more alive to what flowers can do, the key to our forgotten healing powers will be turned in the door, which will open out to infinity and wondrous new vistas. It is not for nothing that the rose of life is used by surgeons of the heart. Snowdrops have a Florimatic name. They are called lights of the earth and are said to bring good fortune into any place that has known ill luck. If that isn't magic, what is? And there are flowers that tell the time of day. Many flowers like pansies open at sunrise and close at sunset. But before the days of cheap watches, gardeners used to take notice of the convolvulus to warn them that it was dinner time. The star of Bethlehem was nicknamed Lady Eleven O'Clock because its flowers opened about that time. Marigolds go off to sleep about 4 p.m. and water lilies begin to close at tea time. Night scented stock opens about 8 p.m. and closes at daybreak. There are many more flowers which tell the time but I am not going into them now. If you want to remove disharmony within creation or disharmony within your environment, turn to flowers. As a result of many years' extensive study, two people with perfect attunement discovered a substance so potent it is capable of giving all created things the ability to reorientate. This substance comes from flowers. They searched for the flower that would act as a selector. It was found and it is the discovery of the age. In a booklet, these two people say, quote, Included in this substance are elements which provide a direct link-up with all the dimensions from the first to the fifth. It is effective no matter what the circumstances. Its power to readjust itself to individual needs is delicate, accurate, and unfailing. Unquote. You want to overcome your fears, your anxieties, and be tolerant, gentle, and full of belief. Quote, a number of flowers possess these qualities in a vital and pure form. Unquote. And these two people have communicated them to pure water in such a way that when the liquid is taken, a few drops only, and distilled down, and distilled down yet again, these same qualities are strengthened within you. To take this liquid of the flowers is to experience deep and true exultation. It cures your ills and it cures sick animals. And those who are already well are made more perfect. A little sprinkled on the ground makes flowers bloom with the most exquisite beauty and used for growing vegetables and fruit. It improves flavour beyond description. And the booklet says it increases the vitality of crops to such an extent that disease cannot affect them. Tens of thousands have confirmed marvellous results. And why all this magic? Well, flowers are fifth dimensional and this is where you, who would work magic for yourself, must try to reach. Is high frequency life any different to what we experience? Indeed it is. This remarkable little booklet would tell you, quote, In the high frequency order of things, the more often you use, the more there is, unquote. But it is the exact opposite in this life, which is of a much lower frequency. The more you use, the less there is. Do remember this. Consequently, the more you use this liquid of the flowers, which is of a higher frequency and brings perfection, the more and more perfect and fewer you become. Harmony and healing takes place, and the more whole you are, 
the easier it is for you to reach the fifth dimensional place, the plane where all is magic. Kings and royalty know that these work and have used back flower remedies and other flower remedies for ages. You may think all this is very far-fetched and impossible, that substance from flowers which has been specifically prepared could not possibly cure your ills or the sickness of your pet. You may shrug your shoulders at the idea that a few sprinkles on the ground could cause flowers, fruit and vegetables to be more perfect. There are others like you, the doubters. A case was brought to the court over whether this substance was genuine or not, and whether it really worked. These two grand people cured hundreds of cases and was proved and the flowers came out victorious. There is magic in flowers and you must concentrate on this. Why not send a box of flowers to someone as a surprise? Don't look upon them as something to give to the dead only. Surrounding the living with colour and beauty and let them get the benefit the flowers will give them. You know a nation by its flowers. France by her packed masses of Parma violets, the United States by her American beauty roses, Holland by her straight martial tulips, and England by the exquisite sweet pea. And just as surely you may know a nation by its flowers, so you may know human beings. Those who were sane and dear enough to send flowers to you when you were radiantly well and alive were men and women who transported you from an unlovely world into a paradise. They were among the best of people. Oh, if only men and women would realise the beauty and help of flowers when you are alive. There are cities abroad with no lampposts exists without its hanging basket of brilliant blossoms. And there are towns in England which have adopted this scheme of decoration. If only somebody would send me flowers, you think. But it only seems to happen on films or when you are dead. You would thrill at the thought of seeing on the outside flowers handled with care. You imagine yourself cutting the string, taking off the brown paper, lifting up the lid, gently catching hold of the white tissue. What then? Ah, violets perhaps, or roses, pale pink peonies, or mimosa, and maidenhair fern. You picture the label with your name on it, the card inside with a few words of greeting. Your little room would look beautiful with the passionate purity of the white flowers, crimson tulips, softly creased white blossoms tied in little bunches. The room would look wonderful. You see golden petals, velvet purples, flowers of orange and pink and white. There would be rich flowers, streaked with strange fantastic hues, starred branches dripping with yellow pompons, and in the centre of all this wonder a magic card with your name on it. You look round your room, there they are, your Mecca, so lovely. You go from blossom to blossom like an enchanted butterfly, softly touching a petal, softly snipping a double narcissus. It was not a small box, not just a few flowers, many, many flowers. All the sweetness in the world was there. Your room is full of the most exquisite perfume. It is a beautiful pageant, the most splendid gift of radiance. It is like a beatitude. You are in a dream. You feel already better. You feel you want to throw your arms round everyone. You are so happy. Yes, magic, that's where it would be. Ludwig Feuerbach, the German philosopher, who declined to find a higher sanction for morality than man's own conception of wrong based on a doctrine of hedonism, said, In the perishable petals of the flower there resides more spirit and life than in the lumpish granite boulder that has defied the tear and wear of thousands of years. Believe me, this is true. I like the old cockney saying, stick a geranium in your act and be happy. Many of you have seen me talking to someone who has come on stage from the audience and describes his dream care. Anybody is free to come and I ask for the names and addresses so that there is no question of stooges. I will ask, what side, sort of car would you like? Then I will name the make quickly before he answers. And I am right. What colour car, I ask? But before the words come, I say red. That's it, isn't it? Flabbergasted, he nods. I'm right again. You would like the registration number to be so-and-so? I would. How would you... How much do you want to pay for it? 
With a snap of the fingers, I named a finger. I named a figure. He looks puzzled, admits I'm right. You will have a vase of flowers each side? Correct again. I've always wanted flowers in my car, he replies. Good. I feel in my breast pocket and draw out a bill for the car. Same make, same colour and same registration numbers. I hand it to him. For a moment, he is speechless. He looks at it and then looks at me. How on earth did you know? The Daily Express headlines. Al-Quran knows the answer before you tell him.